Hi, my name is Maddie, and today I'm going to be informing you about rabbit pellets and how or if they should be added to your rabbit's diet. There are four different types of pellets. There's cold pressed, muesli style pellets, heat pressed, and then forage style will feed. Cold pressed grain free pellets are the best option on the market today. They swell far less than all of the other pellets and they generally have a very natural composition with various grasses, meadow plants, and herbs. Muesli style foods contain a lot of unhealthy ingredients. They have high, a high proportion of fatty ingredients which can lead to animals becoming obese as well as many dental problems are associated with this style food. It is common for a large amount of additives to be added, which is, of course, very unhealthy for the animal. Heat press pellets are one of the most popular pellets on the market today, but doesn't mean they're the healthiest. Heat press pellets are heated to a very high temperature in order to make them easy to digest, but when heated to this high temperature, a lot of the nutrients in the ingredients are stripped due to the temperatures at which they are heated. As a result, manufacturers tend to add additives or artificial vitamins in nutrients which aren't the best for your rabbit. Forage style feed is thought to be the most healthy for rabbits, but when it comes down to it, they tend to add bulking agents such as molasses, which isn't good for guinea pigs or rabbits. Um, but however, a homemade version of this would be the healthiest option. Now, earlier you may have heard me mention swelling. Swelling is where the pellet soaks up a liquid and it swells. When it comes to a cold pressed pellet, the pellet doesn't really swell, but instead it separates its parts. So the different parts of hay and everything. So that makes it easier for the rabbit to digest. But when it comes to heat press pellets, these ingredients actually swell up. They don't really separate, they just swell which can sometimes cause problems for rabbits as well. When it comes to a rabbit's diet, there's really four different parts to it. You have the spring and summer, and then you have the winter and fall. But each of these two parts, so the spring and summer and the winter and fall, they both split into a rabbit with a pelleted diet, without a pelleted diet, a rabbit with, a rabbit without. For indoor and outdoor rabbits during the spring and summer that are on pellets, a bulk of their diet should be a high quality meadow hay and or grasses. Fresh plants may be fed in abundance. This can be homegrown or bought from your local grocery store. But you want to feed at least 10% of their body weight in vegetables daily. For this, I recommend splitting their meals into two or three a day and focus more on leafy greens. But when it comes to pellets, you don't want to feed anything more than one tablespoon of high quality cold pressed pellets. And for treats, pea flakes and fruit may be offered as a treat, but you don't want to do this every day. So the same thing, spring and summer, indoor or outdoor rabbits, except these rabbits don't have pellets. A bulk of their diet should be grass grasses and fresh plant and fended abundance can be homegrown or bought at your grocery store. They should have at least, they should have meadow hay at least 24 seven, unless grass is offered. But dried herbs can also be added to their hay and you again want to feed at least 10% of their body weight in vegetables daily. More is better. Um, also, I recommend splitting their diet their meals into two or three a day and focus on leafy greens. Fruit can be given a few times a week and with this diet it is optional to give one tablespoon of seeds and a few pea flakes a day. Outdoor rabbits with a diet of pellets in the fall and winter. A bulk of their diet should be high quality meadow hay. Fresh plants can be fed in abundance, collected from a garden or your store. 
You want to, again, feed at least 10% of their body weight and vegetables daily. More is better. As this is winter, it's colder, they're probably burning more energy. And since this is an outdoor rabbit, they are burning more energy, especially it depends on where you live. You, again, want to split it into two to three meals a day and focus on leafy greens and vegetables this time. Up to one tablespoon of those cold-pressed pellets again daily, and fruit can be given a few times a week. Pea flakes may be offered as a treat. During the fall and winter, outdoor rabbits that do not have a pellet-based diet, a majority of their diet should be vegetables. Focus on cruciferous vegetables, which are really green, hearty vegetables such as cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, etc. As well as root vegetables like carrots, parsnips, celery, beetroot, etc. Meadow hay should be constantly available. This is very important, 24-7. These animals that are living outdoor and do not have that extra energy feed from the pellets need to make sure that they have that fiber from that hay. Fresh plants may be offered in abundance, again collected from your store or from your garden if you have one, and a handful of mixed dried herbs can be offered daily. Fruit may be fed several times um, a week when you have this case because they are burning off more energy. Um, and because they're burning off more energy, you can also add in the one tablespoon of oil seeds in order to help get that energy up. You probably noticed that I didn't, um, mention diets for rabbits that are indoors in the fall and winter. That is because it is the same as they are in the summer or the spring. The temperature in the house should be roughly the same if at all, the exact same. So you don't really need to worry about changing their diets as they're not going to be spending more energy and wasting it on keeping themselves warm. Now I'm just going to be giving you some general information about a rabbit's diet and how their food should be prepared for them. Hay is probably the most important part of your rabbit's diet. Um, Rabbits have open rooted teeth, meaning they constantly grow. Therefore, they require constant supply of hay for the abrasion of the teeth to break them down and make sure that they don't overgrow. You also want ideal storage for hay that is in a dark, dry place. You don't want um, bugs or water getting into that and causing like mildew. Um, a duvet cover or a pillowcase would work good for covering it in a bucket that is inside. Um, hay should be fresh smelling, dry, and have long strands. This benefits the gut. You can buy good quality hay from horse suppliers and farmers. Um, when you also get it from horse suppliers, it's a lot cheaper, let me tell you. The bags at the pet stores are super expensive, and you can get a whole bale for $14, around $14 from your horse supplier. Rabbits also have a thin stomach and a very long intestine and hay keeps this the intestines in momentum and makes sure that they don't get a block um the longer the hay in store hay is stored the lower the nutritional content so when you're buying hay you want to make sure that you're not going to have it for like a whole year and just have it be sitting there if you have more rabbits then obviously you can buy more at a time but if you have only one rabbit or a few rabbits, um, I wouldn't recommend getting a lot, a lot of hay because it's gonna lose its nutritional value over time. Now for the vegetables. Five to six different vegetables should be present daily in order to get enough vitamins and minerals into your rabbit. Um, before feeding vegetables to your rabbit, <laughs> I'm gonna stress this, you wanna make sure it is room temperature. If you were to feed a rabbit something that is super cold, it could cause digestion problems, and those aren't fun. Their, the bulk of their vegetables should be made up of leafy, leafy greens and other green vegetables, such as celery or peppers, green peppers. Obviously, no, it's not spicy peppers. <laughs> it's just about green bell peppers. Those are pretty great. Um, red bell peppers, I would say, are also very nice, especially in the winter for your indoor or outdoor rabbits because it gives them uh, a lot of vitamin D where the sun may not be out as much in the winter and fall so that definitely helps um and hand feeding vegetables is a great way to bond with your rabbits it helps them associate you with positive things 
But too much fresh food at once can lead to serious digestive problems. Therefore, multiple feedings should be given throughout the day. This is why I stress feeding your rabbit two to three times a day instead of, instead of one time a day. Uh, yeah. Fruit. Fruit that can be fed one to two times a week are apples, strawberries with green tops, rose hips, currants, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. But exotic and tropical fruits can lead to digestive problems such as indigestion. They can also have a very high sugar content and should, in general, just not be fed. Fruit contains lots of, lots of fructose, so should be given as a treat. Between one and two times a week is ideal, um, even less than that, but no more. Fruit supply many healthy vitamins, and stone fruits are not well tolerated by rabbits. These stones themselves are toxic, toxic and should not be fed. This is something such as an avocado. Forage. Um, here's a quick overview. Forage is definitely the most healthy food for rabbits to be consuming. The digestive system works the same way as the wild form of our domestic rabbits. They have a thin stomach and long intestine, and they consume countless small meals each day, including hay, grass, vegetables, fruit, forage, and herbs. As our digestive systems are designed for this, a good variety of grasses and meadow plants contain almost all vitamins and minerals required. In the warmer months, a variety of grasses, plants, etc. can be fed instead of veggies, but the forage must be varied and offered in large quantities as it may not have as much nutritional content as the vegetables would. Herbs. Herbs are a very healthy addition to your rabbit's diet, containing a variety of healthy nutrients. The vast majority of herbs have some healing effect, which can be used as remedies for existing health problems. These medicinal impacts have some side effects. However, with a healthy and varied diet, this should not be a cause or a concern. Herbs have a high calcium content. Nevertheless, they also have a very high water content, um, estimated 70 to 80 percent of water. The high water content is able to flush out surplus calcium, so fresh herbs can be given regularly. This is also why you can give them as more of bulk because it's a lot more water content, not a lot of nutrients. So you're not overpowering your rabbit with nutrients. Um, on the other hand, dried herbs should be given in moderation because they do not contain enough water to flush out the calcium. So it is important to have those dried herbs sometimes to get the nutrients and then the fresh herbs to be able to flush out that calcium. Um, dried herbs are very... Um, are especially very be beneficial during the colder months if you have an outdoor rabbit as fresh herbs are not easily available at that time um, and herbs can be purchased from supermarkets or you can grow some at your own place. Here are some supplements for a rabbit's diet whether they have a pellet diet or a vegetable based diet. Um, pea flakes are very common. They are healthy, a healthy dietary supplement. Starch in the peas breaks down when crushed, so they're not going to impact your rabbit's digestive system. Um, they have a lot of minerals and amino acids, and one pea, about one pea flake a day per rabbit is sufficient. Uh, you don't want to be handing them handfuls a day. That obviously would not be healthy, but about one a day is um, about where you want it to be. Um, and if your rabbit is having a hard time getting weight or maintaining weight, um, they're also pretty fattening. So this can be useful when you're trying to have a rabbit gain weight. Sunflower seeds are something else, or another example of this. Uh, shelled sunflower seeds can be fed as a treat. They contain essential, essential fatty acids and a couple of seeds each week per rabbit is recommended. So sunflower seeds are also very fattening. And if you have a rabbit, again, that is having a hard time gaining weight or maintaining weight, sunflower seeds can definitely help with that. It also strengthens their hair, which is kind of interesting, but it makes sense. They're sunflower seeds. So if your rabbit's having fur problems, there you go. Sunflower seeds can also help with that. There are also some other safe seed examples, such as grass seeds. Make sure these are not treated. Uh, obviously, a grass seed treated with chemicals are not good for your rabbit. Uh, fennel, linseed, cumin, caraway, coriander, milk thistle, myer, hemp, nagilia, chia, um, soaked chia. You don't want to give them just chia seeds. And, yeah.
Last but not least, I'm going to give you a list of vegetables that are safe for rabbits. 60% of their vegetables should be leafy greens. This consists of red leaf lettuce, green leaf lettuce, round leaf lettuce, romaine lettuce, loyo rosso lettuce, little gem lettuce, radicchio, chard, rocket, endive, spinach, kale, savoy cabbage, spring cabbage, red cabbage, white cabbage, Chinese cabbage, pak choy cabbage, carrot green, celery green, beet green, turnip green, radish green, and then kitchen herbs. 30% of the veg or the other um, should be bell peppers, can be bell paper, <laughs> bell peppers, tomatoes, cucumber, celery, zucchini, broccoli, cauliflower, romanesco, fennel, pumpkin, and sweet corn. 10% of the veg vegetables, sh again, should be root vegetables such as carrot, parsnip, celery, turnip, beetroot, Jerusalem artichoke, sugar beet, and sweet potato. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope this helps you out with your rabbit and its diet.